welcoming you into high school spotlight where you know Texas high school volleyball rolls out some of the best talent in the country. In fact, the Dallas area thrives at the sport. Four of the last six A state champs were from the DFW area, in fact. And last season, Lovejoy's Avery Carlson was named National Gatorade Player of the Year. So it's no surprise that now another part of Dallas is being swept up in volleyball fever, so to speak. Let's head to Richardson, Texas, where four hungry programs are eager to set a new standard. like being out there on the court with my teammates. I've been in love with this sport for 30 years. I want to make a difference. Attack, attack, attack. Like, I want to go hard, get kills. I just want to play a really good match in which everyone's at their absolute best. I love when the fans come and cheer us on because I have friends in the crowd and it just like brings us energy. Be positive with the teammates, like if you make an error, shake it off. And I think we kind of just like thrive on that. I want to be the best at everything, whether that's winning on the court or being the best academic team. So I think we're finally trying to make our way into being one of those teams. The Richardson schools are doing pretty good this year and people know that. People are posting about it on social media like it's getting spread around. All the teams are doing a lot better this preseason. <laughs> Because I just want you to relax here and, and push and be aggressive. Okay, the same plan, the 517. All right, let's go. I'm driven by just the passion for the game. And when I came here, uh, I just knew this was it. And at that time, you know, Lake Highlands was coming off a run of going to state a few years. And, you know, I just, I wanted to beat them so bad. There's a lot of talent in our district, but it's who wants it more. That's why it's so strong, like having not just one good team, but all four or five teams. We have, you know, great rivalry within, you know, our district's teams. There's just high energy because the stakes are high. We want to know who's going to win so we can hold it over the other team. Pierce is also very competitive. We always have that big rivalry going on for a long time. Lake Highlands also, maybe even more so than Pierce. Playing them, it's like a game that we talk about for like weeks in advance. Like, it's just super fun, super competitive. Always. We're trying to put ourselves in the best position for playoffs. So beating Lake Highlands, beating Richardson, beating Berkner. If you ask Coach Miracle, he's going to say Lake Highlands. We're not really allowed to wear red in this school because of our rivalry with them. Around 2015, that was the first time since I had been here that we beat Lake Highlands. And then maybe a year later or the next year, we beat Pierce for the first time. Last year, we had a three-way tie for co-district champs with uh, Richardson and Lake Highlands. So kind of just that competitiveness carrying into this year because there wasn't a clear winner. It really proved, I think, to everybody the grit that we had as a team and just that we could pull it off. They have to know that going against in the playoffs, you're going to see the big teams. They're going to get the big kills like we see, you know, we're probably going to see against Highland Park. And you have to not be, you have to assume that that's going to happen and not let that shake you and kind of move on to that next play. Our district in particular this year, I think the top four making some noise. We're definitely doing better this preseason than we have in the past. So we want to show teams that like we don't mess around. Going up against big teams that we're not supposed to win, when it when you see it pay off and work how it's supposed to, then it's a good feeling. Just respect us and be like, this team, they're here to compete and they're going to put up a fight. I mean, I just want them to respect us. And I think that happens if we just play hard. They might go into this thinking like, oh yeah, you know, we're number one in the state, we got this, but they're gonna come out with it ex playing hard and they expect it to play. We're going to give them a challenge. I feel like you have to create a product and you have to kind of brand yourself. And I think it's really important to be consistent. I'd love to push past that second round of playoffs this year. I don't know, just really leave it all out there. Like do everything we can this year just to like really push. Before we uh, won a share of the championship last year, we had finished second six times. Getting over that hump was, I felt like I got some years of my life back. <laughs> I would say that we have fight. I think that that's the big thing, that you are 
going after it all the time, whether it's, you know, taking that big swing, you know, getting in front of a ball and trying to, you know, dig that, you know, big girl who's going to D1. I know that we're in, like I said, this mecca of volleyball. So I'd like to, you know, always contend for a district title, but I think the one thing that I'd really love is to go further in playoffs. Now I feel like we have to prove that winning last year wasn't a fluke. I want you to take an approach because I know you're going to get a kill. They can't touch you, okay? We good? Come on, let's go. Push on three! One, two, three, push! You know the volleyball vibes in Richardson are at their highest, but this tough district just got turned upside down with the addition of the number one team in the state. Yes, the Highland Park Scots will be the team to beat, and everyone knows what's at stake. It's our Pet Boys Most Driven. Well, of course, uh, moving up to six days is going to be a challenge for us. I mean, the, the competition level is even you know stronger. You always want to play the best. I mean, if you want to be the best and you want to compete, you have to play against the best in order to get to that point. We just re we want to like go out there and give them a good game, then kind of be like, oh, okay, like we're not just going to the six A, like going to beat them. There's going to be big girls there. We know that they have their D1 commits. They're a great team overall. You know, if we're going to go up to six A, this is the team we want to do it with. Uh, a lot of experience on this team and a lot of talent. You know, I like our chances. I think we're just excited, not as much oh, let, let's beat them or let's, we know we're going to lose them. Not like that, just so let's take what we've got and just put it all into the game. We've mentioned it, but we don't want to um, give them too much power. We want to focus more on, on us and what we can bring. Before we play them, I don't think we should hype them up too much. Like, yes, they're over six foot. Yes, they're number one in the state. But I think that, like, we should fight and we should push. Don't let their, like, number one seat, like, in the state, like, affect how we play. Like, don't take them. Like, we, should, we shouldn't play with nervousness. We should play, like, how we would play any other team because we're just as good as them no matter what the rank is. Personally, I've exited on my calendar because it's on my birthday. And so I think it would be so awesome if we just all came together and won that night. Well, we will soon find out if anyone can catch Highland Park in this district. Coming up next on High School Spotlight, Texas Football Days has come and gone and was yet another success for father and son of Shadow Creek. The journey is just getting started. In fact, when we return, C.T. Steckel with the story on the Butler family of Shadow Creek and the ride ahead.